This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Some years ago, a doctor from Ohio told a story of visiting his sister in California. They were out taking a walk when an earthquake occurred. They ran back to the house to find dishes toppled out of the cabinet, furniture overturned, cracks in the plaster of the wall and ceiling, but there on the kitchen counter sat a battery-operated transistor radio which someone had left on, and from it was emerging peaceful and beautiful music. The doctor was impressed by the fact that the radio was untouched by the chaos and disorder of the earthquake because even though the house electricity had gone off, it was powered internally. And even though the earth had shaken and damage had been done, the radio was tuned to a distant, unseen signal. It was subject to a power and influence above and beyond its immediate surroundings. So it is also with the life of the man or woman of faith. Such persons are attuned to higher realities and are energized from within. They are not destroyed or downcast by the turmoil and difficulty which may surround them. The late entertainer Eddie Cantor once said in a speech, prayer is not soothing syrup. It offers no glib, easy answers to life's problems. You cannot pray and expect the road smooth and easy when you're through. Prayer will give you a new outlook, a sense of unity with your fellow men, the courage to stand up straight on your own two feet and fight the good fight. It gives you the kind of confidence no lesser force can take away. The great challenge of human life is to discover the full range of your internal potentials, which are not only mental, physical, psychological, and emotional, but spiritual above all, because every human being on this planet is a son or daughter of the living God, and a fragment of infinity indwells the mortal mind. A wife was sitting out in a little rowboat on a cold lake at 5.30 in the morning. Her husband was avidly fishing over the side pretty soon between blue lips she says, tell me again how much fun we're having. I keep forgetting. Yet the truth is, it is possible to learn, to have fun, to enjoy even difficult circumstances. Because the sources of joy in human life are spiritual. The ultimate source of the ultimate delight in living life is the finding and knowing of God. Even in the midst of difficulties and problems, there are two basic ways to cope with a problem. One is to deny it. The other is to deal with it positively and wisely. Suppose a button comes off your shirt. The obvious thing is to sew on a new button. What would you think of somebody who every time a button came off his shirt just sewed up the buttonhole? Yet that is how some people will deal with problems. They'll do anything they can to cover up or conceal or not cope with the fact that they have to make decisions and live in a world of reality as it actually is. The exciting thing is that God will help, will aid and assist any seeking individual in the finding of the best way of dealing with a problem. That too is part of God's love. Seek, said Jesus, and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive. It is, of course, difficult to conceive of God intellectually. A little girl was being put to bed for the night. Her mother kissed her good night and then left her in the dark bedroom alone. The child became frightened, and she began to whimper. Her mother came in again and said, Now, don't cry. You have a warm bed. You have your blankets and your doll with you. And remember, God is with you, too. The little girl said, I know. I have my doll with me, and I have God with me. But she said, I want somebody with a skin face. The spirit and the love of God are quite real. And they are abiding, wonderful sources of strength and peace and comfort. And yet there remains the need for human love and fellowship as well. From other human beings with skin faces, the fatherhood of God is not a solitary truth. Its corollary principle is the brotherhood of man, a corollary both logically inexorable and spiritually inescapable. We have a Father's Day and a Mother's Day and a Brotherhood Week but the spiritual celebration of the family of God began in eternity past and will continue forever in eternity to come. For it is the fundamental spiritual truth of the universe of universes that all are brothers and sisters, children of the living and infinite God, here and now and forever, and members in one worldwide universal family of God. There's an old Hebrew parable about this. It concerns four brothers who decided to have a feast, but because wine was both scarce and expensive, they concluded that 
Each one should bring a large jug of wine and upon arrival pour its contents into a larger vessel which would be the serving jar for the meal. But one of the brothers secretly thought of a way in which he could avoid making his contribution. He decided to bring a jug of water instead of wine. Thinking to himself that it wouldn't be noticed and the wine would look the same when it was all mixed together, so the guests assembled and the feast began. But when the wine was poured, it wasn't wine at all. It was all water. All four brothers had thought alike, and all had brought only water. Authentic brotherhood is never content to let others do it all. The greatest joys of existence lie in loving and serving and in the true satisfactions of giving. Thus does the love of God flow through the personalities of individuals, of God's children, and into the lives of other human beings. A little grade school boy was once asked by his teacher in class what a sweater was. He said, a sweater is something I have to put on anytime my mother feels chilly. Love is involved in putting yourself in the place of another, empathizing with the needs of another. So God dwells not only in the distant center of a universe of universes, but dwells within the human heart as well. Everyone has heard the Indian proverb, don't judge a man until you've walked in his moccasins, because you can't understand another until you have. God, likewise, is concerned about knowing your mind, your circumstances, your thoughts and feelings. God not only walks in our moccasins, God inhabits our souls. A fragment of infinity indwells the mortal mind. The kingdom of God is within you. Some years ago, there was a barber's convention being held at a large East Coast hotel. As a publicity stunt, they sent a committee down to the city's skid row to pick up the most slovenly-looking drunkard they could find who would agree to be the subject of a project, which was to consist of a total alteration of that man's appearance. They found and paid a willing subject to go through this process. And they brought him back to the hotel where the newspapers photographed before and after pictures, proceeded to give him a bath, replace his soiled and wrinkled clothing. They gave him a shave, haircut, manicure, decked him out in a black tuxedo with tails, white tie, top hat. The change was amazing. The before and after pictures were astonishing, and he received a tumultuous ovation from the Barber's Convention. But as I read the story, next morning, one of the newspaper reporters went out to do a follow-up article and found the same man back on Skid Row, dead drunk, sleeping on newspapers in an alley, and still wearing the tuxedo, now rumpled and soiled. The man had been cleaned and groomed externally, but internally. His attitudes and aspirations, his spiritual life, had not been reached. Neither barbers nor tailors can touch and transform the inner soul of a person. That is the domain of God, and it is through synchronizing the human will with the perfect will of God that the individual really begins to live as he or she was born and created and intended to live. And one of the greatest prayers in the Old Testament is, Create in me a clean heart. O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Wrote Paul, be you not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. For years, debating philosophy and religion with university students on radio from coast to coast, from Harvard and Yale to Berkeley and UCLA, I have frequently had students say to me they wondered what real difference a series of beliefs in transcendent spiritual realities would make in their day-by-day -day lives. I respond with an observation from nature. There's a stream called Strawberry Creek that runs through the University of California campus. I used to cross a footbridge over it every day. But I noticed that from time to time, the color of the water in Strawberry Creek would vary enormously. Some days, it would be sparkling clear, others cloudy. On other days, deep brown with mud. Then I found the reason. Some of those days, road builders were at work upstream with considerable dirt from the project clouding the river, and that accounted for the difference. The principle is this. I could tell what was going on upstream by how it looked downstream, and so it is with human existence. What happens in the higher realms of your experience, in your religion, your spiritual life, your philosophy, your ideas and ideals will make an enormous difference in the rest of your life, in the way you deal with waking and sleeping, decisions, treating people, the way you do your work, your play, everything. It is cause and effect, reason and result. 
As a man sows, said the master, so also shall he reap. There's an old story from Scotland. One sunny day, there was a shabbily dressed elderly Scotchman to be seen climbing up Carlton Hill in Edinburgh. And there at the crest, he sat down and looked across the green rolling hills, the blue sky, the white clouds, down at the water below. And as he sat before all this beauty which lay spread before him, an expression of deep peace and an inner radiance seemed to come across his face. And after a while, another man who'd been watching all this from a nearby spot became so intrigued by curiosity to know the old man's thoughts that he came over and spoke to him. The old man said these words. He said, I'm a shoemaker by trade, and I live and work down there in the city, and it's an unclean neighborhood. And there's swearing and drinking and fighting on my street every day and far into the night. And so he said, every now and then, I just climb up here and sit for a while to remind myself that I am not all flesh. So it is. Remember well, you are not all flesh. There are higher beckonings of spirit within the mortal mind. The kingdom of God is within you. May there be moments every day in prayer, in meditation, in worship, in praise of God to remember that you are not all flesh. We were born for eternity. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. In the first chapter of the book of Genesis in the Bible, in the story of the creation of the world and the solar system, seven times you come across the following phrase. Listen to it. And God saw that it was good. And God saw that it was good. This is a good world and a good universe. And the very source of all reality is a God so good that to taste and see and know that God is good and all the varied and multiform experiences of human life commingle in a vast spiritual confluence of purpose in the mind of the everlasting God. For one who knows and believes this truth, all of existence, life and death and life again are good. For God can not only be known about, God can be known. You can not only find out about God, you can find God and live here, now, and eternally in love for God and love for others, which were Jesus' two great commandments, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. If you're interested in these topics, write to us. We want to hear from you at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. SRI, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, What Does Happen When You Die? If you're interested in these topics, no cost, no charge, no obligation. Nobody's going to come to your door with an attache case and try to sell you something. Simply write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute Box, 3080 Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.